Hello, welcome back to Uniquely Us. I'm glad that you're joining me today as we take another uh, piece of scripture and help break it down, maybe give you a little bit more understanding, or maybe uh, this is the first time you will ever hear the word of God. And I'm glad that you're here today. I want to be here to encourage you to be in the Bible more. I want it to be part of your daily life. I want it to be part of your everyday routine where you're picking up scripture and you're reading it. Today's question is, what is the armor of God? Many people may have heard this saying before. Maybe you're a Christian today and you've this is the first time you've heard of what the armor of God is. Or maybe you're a Christian and you've heard that saying and have never really known what it actually means. Well, I'm here today to help you understand that a little better and we're gonna break it down today. So before we go any further today, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button. It helps the channel out, channel out tremendously. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. You can find this in Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six, starting in verse number 10 is where you will find the reference to the whole armor of God. And what is the whole armor of God? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're gonna go ahead and read it here. Uh, today. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints great so now you know where it's at so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it right let's go ahead and look what the armor is and what it is talking about here, because I think it's important that we have a good and clear understanding of what this is, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight this here so that way you can see it there. So right here, the belt of truth, right? The waist, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, right? It's like a belt. It's, a, it's an armor. You have to imagine first century warfare, first century imagery, what does the armor look like? It looks like what they would have worn back in the first century, the Roman Empire, right? So you had your belt is key, right? It holds together everything, holds together all of your equipment. It starts with a belt, right? So the belt of truth, the soldier's belt served as a foundation of his armor, holding his sword and his breastplate because Satan is the father of lies, which we know in John chapter 8, 44, he cannot stand against the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. In John chapter 14, verse number six, victory in spiritual warfare starts with the truth. The truth is the word of God. You have to know the truth. You have to be in the word. Number two, it also says here in verse 14, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate guarded the heart, the source of the soldier's life in a similar way righteousness protects the spiritual life of the christian our righteousness comes not from ourselves but from christ we come down here and having showed your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace right got to protect your feet feet protected by the gospel of peace the soldiers heavy armored sandals gave him traction and security in the heat of battle so our peace with God through Jesus Christ gives us security in the face of Satan's accusations. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which with which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one, right? 
The shield of fate, the soldier's leather-covered shield, could be soaked in water to extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. Fate in God's promises deflects and extinguishes the lies of Satan. Proverbs chapter 30, uh, verse number 5, and of course, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The helmet of salvation, right? Here we have um, where it says, right here, it says, and take the helmet of salvation, right? What is the helmet of salvation? It's the armored helmet protected the soldier's brain. Since the primary battlefield in spiritual warfare is the Christian mind, assurance of salvation defeats the doubt Satan uses to attack us. That's right. The mind is where the battlefield is, right? You got to put that helmet of salvation on. Security of the believer. Also, not to allow other things to enter your mind, right? There's so many other things out there that are so terrible for us to be uh, dwelling on and, and, and putting into our bodies. The helmet of salvation, the assurance of the believer. And of course, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, right? The sword of the spirit. Paul noted only one offensive weapon, the soldier's sword. For the Christian, the sword is the word of God. The word of God. My, my. Thankfully, our spiritual armor is to be used in a war that has already been won. It is said of Napoleon Bonaparte that as he attempted to conquer all the kingdoms of the known world, he spread out a map on the table, pointed to a specific place, and said to his lieutenant, Sirs, if it is weren't for that red spot, I could conquer the world. The spot which he pointed to was the British Isles, the very nation that met Napoleon at Waterloo in Belgium and defeated him in the league of a group of other nations. There is no doubt when Satan talks to his minions about conquering the world, he says the same thing about our red hilltop at calvary where christ's blood was spilled if it were not for that red spot i could conquer the world but that red spot is what makes all the difference in our spiritual battle we do not have to live in a fear of the devil we need enter only the spiritual battle to which we have been called aware of its reality and its uh sub uh sub uh sub and armed with the truth that is the ultimate victory against Satan has already been achieved. Therefore, right now, at this moment, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I hope that you guys will have a great rest of your day, a blessed day. Um, I hope this uh, scripture helped maybe clear some stuff up for you. Maybe this is the first time you got to hear this. Uh, if so, drop me a uh, drop me a comment in the comment section. I would love to interact with you guys. So thank you again for uh, today. Thank you for listening. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Have a blessed day, everyone.